1785, the French physicist Charles Augustin de Coulomb published his first three reports of electricity and magnetism, where he states his law. Coulomb's law, like all physical laws, was derived from experimentation and is meant to quantify the forces between point charges. Point charges are an idealized form of the fundamental building blocks of matter and is a charge located on a body with dimensions much smaller than other relevant dimensions. It's basically a charge at a point. Point charges exist at a point and therefore have no area or volume. So for example, the electric charges collected at a pinhead can be considered as a point charge. In terms of polarity, charges can either be positive or negative. In electromagnetic theory, a positive charge is symbolized by divergent lines or lines moving away from the charged particle. A negative charge has convergent lines or lines that move towards the charged particle. Based on this convention, two fundamental principles are derived. The first is that like charges repel each other and the second is that opposite charges attract each other. Let's take two positive charges for instance. Both charges have lines pushing each other, thus increasing the overall distance between the two charges. A similar thing happens when we try to join two negative charges. The converging forces increases the distance between the two points. For a paired positive and negative charge configuration, all lines or forces move in the same direction, which reduces the overall distance between the two charges. Charges are usually measured in coulombs, with one coulomb representing 6 times 10 to the power 18 electrons. A coulomb is a large unit of charge, as the charge of a single electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs, where the minus sign represents the polarity of the charge. The charge in coulombs of a proton has the same magnitude as the charge in coulombs of an electron, but with a positive polarity. Now that you have a fair understanding of what charges are, let us go on to discuss Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law, or Coulomb's inverse square law, states that the force between two point charges is along the line joining them and is directly proportional to the product of the point charges, but inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two point charges. From this law, we can deduce three statements. First of all, the force between the two point charges will be a straight line joining both charges. Secondly, the force is directly proportional to the product of Q1, that's the first point charge, and Q2, the second point charge. Lastly, the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two point charges. All three statements can be used to derive a relationship between the force, the charges, and the distance between them. Depending on the position of the two charges, we can have two forms of our equation. If the charges have no position vectors, the first statement in Coulomb's law can be ignored. The second statement will give us this relation, that is, F is proportional to the product of Q1 and Q2. The last statement can be transcribed into this relationship. That is, F is proportional to the inverse square of the distance R. Now we can combine both equations to form one scalar equation, which gives us F is proportional to the product of Q1 and Q2 divided by R square times K, where K is the constant of proportionality. The constant of proportionality, also known as Coulomb's constant, depends on the system of units used. In SI units, which is what we're using in this video, the charges Q1 and Q2 are in coulombs, that's C. The distance R is in meters and the force is in newtons. The constant K is therefore 1 divided by 4 times pi times epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space given as A times 85 times 10 to the power minus 12 farads per meter. Permittivity is simply defined as the degree of how much a dielectric can be polarized. A material with high permittivity polarizes more in response to an applied electric field than a material with low permittivity, thereby storing more energy in the material. In simple terms, it is how much a given dielectric permits electric field to pass through. Now there are several types of dielectrics, which means that point charges can exist in several mediums, such as water and air. To apply Coulomb's law to such cases, we simply replace the permittivity of free space, which is also the permittivity of vacuum, with the permittivity of water or air. Take this question for instance. Two protons are on either side of an electron, as shown below. The electron is 30 micrometers away from the proton on its left and 10 micrometers away from the proton on its right. What is the magnitude and direction of the net electric force acting on the electron? Now we've been given the constant of proportionality in this question and the charge of a proton. 
First of all, the net force on the electron is the sum of the forces between the electron and each of the protons. That's F1 plus F2. These forces are given by Coulomb's law. F equals the proportionality constant K times Q1 Q2 divided by R squared. To find F1 and F2, we simply substitute their respective values, which gives F1 as 2.56 times 10 to the power minus 19 newtons, and F2 as 2.3 times 10 to the power minus 18 newtons. Now because opposite charges attract, F1 points left, that's in the negative direction, and F2 points right to the positive direction. Therefore, in finding the net force, we would have to negate F1, and the result would be 2.04 times 10 to the power minus 18 newtons. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to drop a comment below. Also, I make electrical engineering videos like this one, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next.